so yeah, I'm pretty sure that Vulgarin is asleep. So we might as well start. Okay, <laughs> if, fair enough. If everybody is physically, if not emotionally prepared. I mean, I said I was like, you know, I had a plan, like a, a, a kind of plan, a vague plan. But it was really just I thought about it for about 10 minutes while I was drinking coffee two-handed this morning. So... And I asked Carathlana a couple of questions and that's about all I got, you know, and everything else is like, oh, what do I, what do I remember what was supposed to maybe happen? <laughs> and boy, I sure hope I set stuff up. Well, we'll find out. But it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure we'll figure something out for the situation well, I mean, that your characters are in. It's me and Rich. It's fine. We'll go with the floor. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, and if you need to go get another beer or something, let me know. Mm. We'll take a break anyway we halfway prepared. through. We have brought all the beers up in a cool bag. <laughs> <laughs> we are organized. Tucking in. Yeah. For the I'm really to buy that mini fridge. <laughs> for the long dungeon crawl. Oh, well, the first thing. The first thing probably is going to be doing a charisma check in the tower. And I'm going to roll for Steve. Hey, Dicey, spinny, spinny, spinny. There we go. I've already rolled for Barry. As, Did Barry do well? As Steve's uh, campaign manager. And I will tell you, don't tell Steve. I won't tell Steve. <laughs> Barry rolled a nat one. Oh. <laughs> so, unless Steve rolls a nat 20, it pretty much doesn't matter what he rolls this week. It's going gonna, it's gonna to do, do a hit on... Uh, Esteban Urkel's campaign, which he's, he's going to be, be really happy <laughs> about, you know, but I'm not going to tell him that he should be happy. I mean, if he was here, I wouldn't have told him that it was good news anyhow, so. Fantastic. But y'all know that it's a lot less right. likely that Esteban is accidentally going to get elected to the city council of Saltmarsh now. Well, that's annoying because that means one of us is more likely. <laughs> Let's see what I roll for him. And I'm not going to roll it in the tower since I've already, like, given you full... Uh, knowledge about uh, what Barry did. I didn't get a number. What did you see a number for that? No. All that spinning and no number. I feel cheated. I didn't even see the dice spinning. Oh, there we go. Wow, that, that time like it went in the tower. Yeah, shadow dice. Oh, it's because it's because of me. I rolled a seventeen for Steve, which would have been respectable if not for Barry. Yeah, Barry's still tanking that. And just as, like, when you roll a nat 20, I double what you get. Uh, for a nat 1, I decide to have it. So, effectively, he rolled um, an 8 for this week. Okay, do you guys remember what happened, like, three weeks ago? Kill some ta. Um, yeah, we did. I think that's pretty much it, wasn't it? Oh, we hit the, we hit the red orb. We pounded on that. This is my notes. Right, so we pounded on the red orb. Steve killed it. Yeah. It exploded. All, all, the gatekeep, all the gatekeeper suggested techniques for breaking some kind of portal-based object. Um, it exploded, but Kaimia managed to um, avoid being damaged because he was that orb close to it. it. It seemed to be fire-based in power. Yes. And energy. And uh, since Kaimir is resistant to fire damage wasn't a problem you did you ran into some napping living tar uh, managed to wake it up and had to uh, turn it into dead ash mm -hmm. um and i've just remembered based on where the map is i've missed a whole lot of notes out of my thing but after we killed the tar we went further south i think you did well you kind of went further south um, in the distance, you spotted a scene by another infernal portal, and only a couple people of uh, the party could really pick out, had the perception to hear and pick out what was going on, and I only, I remember that Kareth Lana was one of them, but I don't remember who the other one was. I think, I mean, it was either, it was either Kaimir or Shafira. I also remember... This was a strange instance where Shafira wound up being the noisiest person in the party. <laughs> yes. 
uh, and drew the attention not of not of all the creatures that were assembled because if you look at the map you see that there are quite a few creatures assembled to the south by this infernal portal yeah. um, there's some drama going on but the drama that you observed was the succubus Lyra who you had previously encountered disguised as Belly the what who you thought was the daughter of Queen Otho Kent of the Bloodroot Lizard Folk tribe who, one of your goals coming into this ruins in the first place, if you remember that far back, <laughs> why you were even here in the first place, was to check and see, because there, there'd been, uh, they'd sent, the, the lizard folk tribe had sent out a couple bands to fetch the bloodroot sap for a ritual. And... Uh, there was a bit. There's some issues with like the religious sector of the tribe not having confidence in the queen because they didn't have the sap for this ritual, and that was supposed to like get her some favor that was needed so that you could maybe do the diplomatic negotiations with Saltmarsh. Just in case you forgot that whole part, because a lot has happened. I mean, these this ruins. There have been lots of levels. A lot of stuff has happened. Dragons suddenly are, are like an, an element. Demons, devils, what are they on about? Portals going to Kyber. I mean, it's understandable if maybe Bloodroot Sap is not like number one in your priorities. But it was a thing. It was a thing. The, last time, the first time you'd encountered this, this succubus, she had been disguised as uh, the daughter of Queen Otho Kent, but you'd uncovered the ruse uh, that Belly had actually been killed and the succubus had been, has been roaming around these ruins trying to find a page uh, out of the Codex of the Infinite Plains for some purpose that you guys don't completely understand, haven't completely found out what the Devils of Shabarath are up to. You also know that the Devils seem to have kidnapped the dragon Kaifoth whose lair Marceval was using some kind of Orby device that may or may not have anything to do with Carathlano. <laughs> she's, she's confused about the whole situation and what it might have to do with her. So, you know, it, it could be, anything could be happening, really. She's not nervous about it at all. No. Uh, so you, you spied this succubus coming through the portal from the south. She had a bunch of devils, a devil guard with her. And they were leading a gnarly mama bird on a chain leash. And the succubus was talking to the gnarly, gnarly bird like, hey, you're going to help me find the, the little kid, the dragon kid, who, who you've met as and know his, likes to be called Gary. He also lent Chimere a little double-bladed uh, scythe quarterstaff kind of weapon. Because hmm. uh, he didn't really, you know, he, he didn't want to have to practice with it. So he figures, you know, just return it to him in 100 years or so and it'll be fine. Lyra's bringing back this gnarly mama bird. Wants uh, the bird to sniff out, I guess, where this codex page was. But Shifira made a little bit of noise. And, and Lyra noticed that you guys were the north and looking around the group she decided hey let's let's try the whole charm thing on Steve and it was successful but Steve through his earlier deceits and subterfuges managed to hand her uh, the codex page you had set up that was a fake it was like it was supposed to be the the um, a counterfeit codex page stuffed into a little toy dragon plushie. As, you know, here it is, the real thing. And she's gone off believing it because he actually rolled very really high on his deception. And, we do. And lying is the thing that the party is good at as a whole. Mm-hmm. And she's gone off through the Infernal Portal, leaving all of her minions, you know, clean up, do whatever. While she goes through, through the portal to maybe Shavrath and uh, do whatever she's planning to do with that page. 
you see that the charming of Steve had some consequences. It, that the gnarly mama bird had previously been docile when you first spied this group of devils. But as soon as Steve was charged, the bird became very agitated and aggressive. And so the devil guards had to kind of fight to try to restrain the bird again. So they've been occupied with that. Now there is one leader of Lyra's devil guard who was wearing this unearthly mask of it's kind of like a death mask of gold of a man's screaming face and this this guard spotted some fiendish tigers running around Kyber as fiendish tigers do and immediately felt compelled to attack them so this this split from the party and you see the soldier has engaged these this pair of fiendish tigers in combat so he's distracted battling the tigers to the death and you can see around his neck like there's this necklace of a whole bunch of of like looks like tiger claws tiger claws so okay. to the south you see you see one one devil guy fighting fiendish tigers there's carnage everywhere he um i think he's fighting with he's got a halberd and so he's got some reach and he's just like jabbing at them there's a trio of guards to the south and they have just narrowly managed to restrain the gnarly bird again uh not without um in enduring many wounds in the process but the bird seems to be unable to fly at the moment and is kind of within a, a barbed net kind of thing but it's struggling everyone's distracted you're to the north with uh Carithlana and Steve Dave the imp you have humanized and Steve says he feels funny <laughs> um how funny just just oh do we think he's still charmed then Oh, he's, oh, I'm, I'm so charmed. I'm very charmed. That lady, she kissed me, and I still feel charmed, and she wants me to go through the portal and bring her some ice water. I don't want to go. And he, oh. he, he flings out his arms, and he, like, suddenly hugs Carathlana. He's like, I don't, I don't want to go. But, but, but I'm going to have to go. Uh, can we tie him up? Can we attach him to us so he can't get away? You suggest this, and, and Carathon is like, that's a good idea. And so she flings her flail and bops Steve on the head. And he's knocked unconscious. Well, that works as well. And, and she, like, nudges him a little bit with her boot, but her boot's kind of um, burnt and, and scarred. You can see, like, you know, there's one toe sticking out. Because she had to wade through some acid earlier. She's like, do you think that do you think that took? And then she she bops him again just in case. That would work. I think. Do you guys have anything left that you could potentially restrain Steve? Um, I could tie up my, I could oh. tie up my bedroll. Go on. Yeah, bedroll and blanket. She so could like do a, like a Steve burrito. Yeah. Soon, an idea as well. Um, I was just going to tear strips off and, and bind his, his hands and his legs. Um, Carathlana takes his short sword and kind of puts it to the side so it's like not in the immediate grip. Because uh, she's like, I, she's, she's thinking, I think he uses this to, to do all that like weirdo you know, tentacle stuff and the and the green smoke. I think this has something to do with it. Okay. So maybe maybe we shouldn't let him play with it for now. Possibly not. No. That sounds like a very good idea. Um I'm trying to think where we could put it that's safe. Has he still got the um the bag of holding on him? He does. He does still have the bag of holding. It's tied to his belt. 
we put which you've wrapped up in, in the there. blanket. Ah, right. Okay. Um. All right then. Um. Maybe just strap it to my back or something like that. How are we going to tra- carry him? Carathon's like, you know, I think he's just going to slow you down. And she's what, like, did... she's rubbing her chin. She's like, I think what I, I think what we should do, just to speed things up, is I guard him and make sure he doesn't get up to doing anything. If he's still under the effects of the charm from that succubus lady and it takes time to wear off I can just sit here and I can like you know knock him unconscious again if, he, if it looks like he's going to wake up okay mm-hmm. Sounds like a plan. keep him out of harm's way and we'll go try and find the other orbs right right just okay. in case you get any boo-boos though here um have have a here's a potion so she like kind of rummages in her bag I'm looking at your inventory right now you have an extra potion of healing okay thank you so I've given one to Shakira but Kyrie, you have a potion of greater healing do you have any potions of healing already Mm-mm. I used them I tend to, I tend to approach death quite quickly, so I've used them, <laughs> and a couple of tasty bacon's I've got left as well. I'm giving you one. Okay. Thank you. So you've got a potion of greater healing, a potion of healing, and you have some some tasty bacon. Mm-hmm. Okay. In that case, I pass right. Steve's sword back to Kerry Flan and say, "Right, will you look after that?" All right. So she's she's kind of like strapped that to her back, but keeping it out out of rain. And it's weird. For a split second, you see uh, the tentacle appears. Toby gives a little wave to you, looks at Steve, and then in in a weird way, you think you see the tentacle shrug, and then it disappears again. Like the tentacle, the tentacle wasn't going to interfere with whatever's going on. Wise. I feel. Apart from when he's playing with deformed swagger. Like Steve's tentacle is, is self aware now. Uh oh. <laughs> That's a scary thought. Right. And the spectral puffin's still hanging out, but eventually it's going to like fade away. So it is. Uh, it is Shafira. And Chimer splitting from Carathlana and Steve. You've got Dave flying with you. And you, so you still know that this drama is going on to the south. And uh, as, um, while all this has been going on, you look south again. And you see that the gnarly mama bird has um, fought off its restraints again. And it's fighting those soldiers even more. Uh, And it's taken one of them out. Good for him. And suddenly, a bunch of dretches have appeared in, uh, on the scene and are assisting the gnarly bird and uh, humping on the <laughs> devil guards. <laughs> Throwing poop, you know, doing what dretches do. Likewise, the uh, devil soldier that is in a mask with like the tiger claws around its neck has dispatched one of the fiendish tigers. And they're fighting Kato Imano. Okay, so we Kato came Imano. from... We came from the north, northeast down. We don't know if there's anything south, but potentially they're distracted and we could just leave them to it. So we could just try and sneak off and head west. That's what I was thinking. Leave them to it. Right. Yeah. I think that's the plan then. We'll leave, like we'll leave think... them alone. And I'm going un- to unleash a little bit more, a little more map. Because you were far enough south, like Shafira was far enough south to see a little bit that 
Shafir is aware that it did seem to kind of uh, the tunnel seem there, there's a tunnel beyond where the devils were that seems to go off to the southeast a little bit, and then as you're saying before, it there's a space to the west that you haven't gone to. Well, I think we could. It looks like so from where we are, I'm going to move over here a bit. Um, I'm assuming I can see that the acid pool dries out just to the north. So if we go up that way, we're gonna we're not gonna have to get any closer to that devil fighting that last tiger. We don't have to worry about drawing his attention. I don't see where Chimera is. Oh, I do uh, see where you are. You're standing in right. tar. Yeah, I am standing in tar. I'm a, well, maybe I won't stand in the tar there. Um, You're so stealthy. I can't even see you on the map. <laughs> So I'm thinking we go northwest just to go up slightly so we can avoid the acid and go up and then just go um, southwest and just follow that around and see what, see what we can see. Right. There are places here where you see like the, the ebb and flow of the acid has been shallow enough that it just has left gouges in the stone cavern mm -hmm. and you can cross by foot with some climbing. Okay. You good with that? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Do that. Okay. They're gonna toddle this way. Come on, Dave. You can okay. come with us. Dave goes invisible for now. Good for him. It's probably safest. But you hear he's staying by your shoulder, Chimere. You can hear the flap of his wing. But this is like stealth mode for him. Um, well, I guess just, so I guess at this point it's just trying to make out if he's all to the south or if we just need to keep going west. You see, like, there's another little dead end tributary to the south a little bit. Okay. And so then as you look about. further south, you see there's a, a fiendish mm -hmm. spider kind of crawling around the caves. at a distance. It's just lackadaisically kind of crawling south. You look further, even further to the south. And you spot it has a friend, but there's also a purple orb. Yeah, all right. Okay, can we, could, could we shoot that first spider to get it to come up by himself so we can take him on one, on, two on one? Do we think, or do we think his friend will just automatically come with him because that's what they do? Um, um, you can do a nature check maybe to see if what you know about fiendish spider behavior. Like if they're, if they're, right. if they're the kind of animal that engages in pack tactics. Okay, considering my minus one on nature, this might not work. <laughs> we know nothing. You don't know. You don't know if that's a thing. I mean, you're not sure what pack tactics are. So, I mean, you guys, it, it could be a plan. It could be a plan. Should we try it? Can you think of what else we could try? Because we need to get past them. Or do we go south slightly and see if we can get in to get into the acid? Do you think he would just automatically wander around? They're both heading south. They're walking. They're kind of, they're slowly ambling south. You can see that the one that's farther south is closer to the cavern wall. And it seems to be more occupied and distracted into doing stuff like maybe it's starting to nest and, and spin webs between the cavern wall and the orb itself. Um, but right. the the one that's for, further to the north, that's labeled Fiendish Spider number two, is just kind of like, you know, tippy-toeing, tippy crawling around, tick-tick-ticking, doing spider stuff. Should we shoot it? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. We're going we're gonna to try and um, attract the attention of Fiendish Spider two to oh. get him away from him. I'll shoot some at him. <laughs> I 
this is the day that all your rolls go wrong. I want both of you to roll stealth checks as well. Oh, okay. I have to say that my uh, dice is a little bit laggy, so... Oh my god. We're gonna die. <laughs> So, Shafir, you missed with your bow. I did. Uh, Chimir, did you try to do any ranged attack? Um, I haven't yet. I've got, so my spears have all been used. I've got a dart left, so I could try chucking that at him. Let me try that. And that then uses my last dart and I get that out of the way. Oh, my God. So you've right. been trying to throw things. You can just imagine it's going... Missing, <laughs> missing, just missing. Clinking off the wall. And your, your throw is bad enough with that dart that you completely miss spider number two. And it's still ambling off, you know, da 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 But... The dart lands right by spider number one. And it was completely oblivious to your presence, but then this noise attracts it, and you see it kind of turn around. It's looking your direction, and it sees that there's, like, things moving and throwing stuff from a distance. So it starts crawling. Okay. And is Fiendish Spider number two still oblivious to us? Yeah, Spider number two is still oblivious. And he ignores number one? Right, that's fine, that's fine. We still get number one of them, don't we? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm loath to shoot anything else at number one while it's still close to number two. Rich is thinking. Wanna try another arrow at it, or do you want to wait for it to come to us? I was thinking I might chuck a hand axe at it, actually. I've still got three hand axes left. Okay. Pay no attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm going to try and sunbolt him, then. So, you know, you're like 30 feet away from uh, Spider 1. Yeah, range of 30. So, I sh well, in theory, I can hit him. But do I want to get closer? No, I don't really. I'm hoping he'll crawl through the acid and... <gasps> That's better. So, you shoot the sunbolt at the, sp at the spider that noticed you. And it lands with un airing aptitude square between the spider's eyes and you hear this little <laughs> kind of squawk from the spider there we go you do six damage there's a little puff of smoke coming up between the little bulbous areas where all of the spider's eyes are planted on either side of its head there's a singed uh, kind of feeler Tickling out from its its uh, proboscis. Do spiders have proboscis? I don't know. We're gonna pretend that fiendish spiders do. Well, they look a bit weird, so yeah. Fiend fiendish? That's weird. It can it can have all manner of strange parts. Of course it can. Um, the squawk has brought the attention of the other spider though, and it kind of whirls around and it's like tick tick tick. What's this then? So you have the attention of both spiders, so roll initiative. Now I roll well. You guys aren't surprised. You're like, hey, we've been trying to shoot these spiders. We know <laughs> what's what. Instantly been able to tell that, uh, yeah, they know that we're here. We better start really killing them now. Do it properly, instead of trying, yeah. Now, you can still hear the, the sounds of battle coming from the direction that you just left. Um, and it continues. Okay. Um... 
Pioneer, you get to uh, do the next uh, whomping, if whomping is to be had. Okay. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? We could potentially drag him back with us and try and get him involved in the fight that's going on. Yeah, but that then it might make all that other stuff aware that we're there and then we'd have to fight all that as well. Never has combat been more like DDO I know. In, in, in this, in Fantasy Grounds, than right now. Should we try and take him? And then if he starts getting bad, we can run back. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Um, I'll shoot another sunbolt then. They're not close enough to be pound on yet, and I don't want to. Wow, I'll hit as well. Wow. That was That's a good roll. Yeah. It was just as good as your critical hit. Then, um... You yeah, were on me. radiant fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are up. I'm not in that mode, obviously. I'll shoot an arrow. Yeah, Chimera, you, you've launched, One. uh two sunbolts at the at this one spider now and you see like this egg sack with your second bolt has kind of plopped off of the hind end of this of the spider one and your bolt has managed to set it on fire spider tushy uh but unfortunately shafira tries to shoot another arrow apparently all of shafira's pencils have run out and she has missed. She has missed with an arrow. These are crazy times. No, <laughs> give you a beer. <laughs> this is it now. You can tell it's dire. Skip ahead through all the people who are doing things in other parts of the dungeon. <laughs> And the, the spider who has taken all of the sunbolt damage thus far and whose babies have just been murdered by Chimere uh, decides to defiantly shoot out a column of webbing at Chimere. Oh, the, source, the source of all the radiant energy. Yeah. So you need to make a strength save. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, no. Strength. Is it a... Never mind. I just do a ranged attack on you. You do a strength save at, if I actually hit you. And I do hit you! So Ooh. you are now restrained. Chimera is restrained by webbing. And your next turn, you'll get to do a save to see if you can escape it. Or Shafira can assist your escape through whatever means she thinks might be effective. Yeah. That's that that's the uh Fetish Spider one's uh turn. Fetish Spider two tries to web Shafira and hits. So pew pew You've both been um, encased in webbing. Fabulous. You're both now restrained. You can look at each other and you can talk <laughs> to each other. And you can be like, well. <laughs> and the spiders are still 30 feet away. Across, across kind of like this chasm. So you can faintly hear their ticky, 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 like squawkings. Um, and they aren't right on you, but uh, a little bit immobile. Mm. You can also hear the sounds of battle coming from elsewhere. Um, I don't know. Um, I suppose it would be me next. 
I am gradu- I'm just I'm just applying uh, damages as if the battle is still going on. Okay. And working my way back to you. Oh, Dave is here. Dave is here. Uh, both of you roll a um, d4. For d4 is the pyramid. Oh, triangular pyramid. Yes. Oh, <laughs> man! Twinsies! Okay, roll again. Okay, Shafira wins. So Dave flies over to Shafira and starts trying to nibble her free. So I'm going to roll a strength check on Dave to see if he's remotely successful. Strike me as a strong type chap. Yeah, his strength is six. All right. Oh, he's even worse than me. Oh, wait, I think that's supposed to be a save, not a check. Sorry. Oh, I didn't do it right. Why can I not roll today? Okay, still not good enough. When I did a check, it was a one. And then the second time, I think I rolled another one, but it didn't land in the box. And this time I rolled a 10, but, you know, not good enough. So he's, like, trying to nibble Shafira free, but not helping. Okay. However, because he's trying to assist you, Shafira, when you do your save on your turn, you get to roll with advantage. Okay. The orb is just sitting there to the south of Womp Womping with power. (laughs) You hear the sound of something cry out a death cry to the south that you left. Okay, uh, Chimere, it's your turn again. I need to do a strength save? Yes, do a strength save. Unfortunately, 10 is not enough to free yourself. So you struggle against the webbed bonds on you, but it just, you know, you feel the, the web stretch, 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 but it doesn't give. Shafira. Strength save with advantage. Okay. (laughs) I I don't think you need to worry about it. Effortless. You you kind of like, you know, you you kind of sink in, you know, to try to tense your muscles and, and shrink your halfling form as small as it will go. And you manage to just kind of wiggle out of the webbing and Dave is still trying to like nibble through nibble through nibble through but you just like wiggle past him and leave behind this like little cocoon like sleeve of where the webbing was and then you're free and you're so you were so skilled at escaping these bonds that you're still able to attack this turn (laughs) or you can try to assist Chimere I'll um I'll try and help Kaimir. Sure. Hmm? Okay. Well, yeah, because I keep missing with the with the stuff for the spider, so I might as well help you, um, and try and cut cut away some web with my dagger. Okay. So, uh, roll another uh, strength. As another strength. Uh, do a strength check this time. I think. No way. Let's make it be. How do skills work? I think I want it to be a sleight of hand kind of situation. Because you're trying to finagle using your particular set of skills, uh, this web away from Chimere. Yeah. Unfortunately, 11 isn't good enough. No. But seeing as you're trying to help Chimere, and now Dave is moving over and trying to nibble on Chimere a little bit. Uh, potentially, you know, if we get to Chimere's next turn, Chimere will have advantage as well. Okay. Like Ash says, if we get to Chimere's next turn. I knew somebody (laughs) was was gonna overhear that and maybe get nervous. 
when we get to Chimera's next turn. Uh huh. Applying damages. We are on a spider's turn. This spider uh, crawls across the chasm. Tick, 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 tick. And it tries to bite uh, somebody. Roll d6s, both of you. Okay, it tries to bite Shafira. Oh, don't count that because I forgot to remove your effect. You were not restrained, so that shouldn't have had advantage. Let me roll the bite again. Okay, it still hits. Do a constitution, a constitution saving throw, Shafira. Nice. All right. So you take 11 points of damage just from the bite itself, and you feel like there's this strange kind of substance making the wound feel a little bit tingly, but your constitution is such that you fight off the effects, and you remain unfazed additionally by the spider bite. Spider bite two, spider two, <laughs> crawls toward you, but seeing that spider one is in its way, it and that the acid is kind of like on the other side, what it does is it kind of goes the long way around, and it, it gets this far, and then it tries to make a little leap. And I'm going to roll a acrobatics thing to see if it leaps. And it easily does. It does hop across this little chasm where, you know, it's pretty shallow at this point. But just in case, and it lands behind uh, Shafir. So Shafir's kind of flanked between two large fiendish spiders now. They aren't necessarily right on top of Chimere as much, but still within punching range. If Chimere was not restrained by webbing. And that will be that spider's turn. Just applying some damage. All right, it's Dave's turn. Dave is going to try to nibble through Chimera. Um, Chimera's webbing. And still isn't successful, but he is assisting you as well as, as uh, Shafir is assisting you. So now that it's your turn again, Chimere, you can uh, roll a strength save with advantage to see if you escape. And yes, 17 is enough that you break free. It tickles a little bit where Dave is trying to help. <laughs> and you're able to attack something. All right, then I'm going to punch spider one. Dave's like, I helped! Oh. Did that, was that still advantage? That was still advantage. You, you hit, um, since that's a hit, let's treat it like a hit. Uh, as long as you didn't roll, you, okay, you dropped an 18. Just making sure you didn't drop a 20. And I'll take off your effect. Oh, sorry, I thought I'd managed to roll with advantage, not disadvantage. Okay. You were restrained, and it was, it was applying the disadvantage because you were rest restrained. Okay, so... Um, damage, damage, damage. That one. Right, and it's been so long since I punched anything, I can punch again, yeah? Yes, with as a bonus action. So I'm going to do that. Ugh, it's true to form. There's still a little bit of sticky webbing on your offhand, and you, it kind of catches, and you, you, you know, swing your arm to punch at the spider, and it's kind of still attached to your side, so it stops short. And you notice, like, oh, there's still this web kind of sticking your arm to your side. So you're cleaning that off, and so that the second one doesn't land. But you did do three damage with your main hand, which is better than yeah. zero. Yes. Um, are you going to move any, in any way, shape, or form? Um...
Yeah, I could do, but do I? Will I? Will they take a, an attack on me if I move? I've kind of blobbed uh, the spider. I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna say no um, and treat the spider as being there. That you aren't actually flanked by Spider 2, only okay. um, Shafira is. Alright, so since I don't know what's to the northwest, I'm going to back up that way. Okay, so you've like kind of backed away. Uh, Shafira is between the two spiders, and it's now Shafira's turn. I attacked Spider 1, yeah. He's the one who's taken 15 damage so far. Okay. Well, I'm going to see if I can stab uh, Spider 1 with my dagger. I get it, I get it, I get it. And you do! Yeah, 25. And you do 6 damage to that spider. Spider is obviously wounded. You've cut off at least two legs. The egg sac has, has long been fried. <laughs> and there's like a little, there's this large gouge that's kind of oozing and ichor between, um, you know, going, splitting the, the head of the spider. It's still moving though. Okie doke. Um, I'm going to move as well. And you can disengage as a bonus action. And disengage. I mean, if, if you want to back up so you can shoot at him again. No, true, yeah. I'm sure that's what they'll do. So. Okay. Okay. Oh wait, that was that wasn't a thing. <laughs> I did automatic oh. damage to the wrong thing. Dave's turn. Dave gets very brave. I'm going to be brave. I am Dave. I am humanized. And he flies up to Spider Two, and he tries to sting him, and he misses. So he immediately goes invisible. Uh oh! And then going back around, it's Chimera's turn again. Okay, um, I am going to I'll pull out the double bladed scythe. And this time I'm going to attack Spider 2. Or not? Do I get a double double attack with this? Yes, again? you do. Yeah. Well, that's better. Not so much in the terms of damage, though. But let me check okay. something. I need to double check how that scythe works again because it's been so long. You've also, uh, you've used the scythe long enough that you have uh, become attuned. Ooh. So you realize that it's a fancy thing and it actually has a name called the Hands of Fate. Ooh. Okay, so I need to do a uh, constitution saving throw. And what is your proficiency bonus and your dex modifier? Uh, what? <laughs> Let me look at your what is my... Uh, your proficiency is plus two right now, and your dex modifier is plus three, so that's going to be... Okay, you have a DC of 13 with this weapon. Okay. So you did a hit. The spider... Wait, how much... You did two damage? The two damage. The spider... Rolls a dex save. Manages to save because spiders are pretty, uh, pretty oh, okay. hoppy, so mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't take any additional damage. Okay. 
and okay, this only works when it's a fail, when it's a failed save. Okay. But now that you can actually read what it does, you can see that uh, there's like that bonus lightning effect when you have a hit with this weapon. Very cool. Shafira, it is your turn. Right, then I shall try shooting, shooting an arrow at the spider. Woohoo! I'm on your back. Shafira's got a groove back. And she shoots an arrow and splats that spider. So Spider-1 uh, flips over, legs in the air, and lets out one final death, death squawk. Yay. Spider-2, seeing Chimer so near and so juicy, tries to uh, eat him. Or bite him or something. I'm applying a little bit of damage to things that are fighting in the distance. You hear another kind of like a, a little cry of, of, of death uh, coming from the battles to the south um, in the distance. So you're not the only persons killing things here. Yes, and Spider tries to bite Chimera. But misses. And Dave, he poofs into, vis into visibility again, and he tries to sting uh, that spider again. This time he hits, and he lets out, lets out a little woohoo! <laughs> Go on, Dave. And he does uh, four damage, and this uh, spider has to make a con save. Because unlike uh, Imp Brethren, this spider apparently has not built up an immunity to the poison in Imp Spit. Or we shall see. I think a 14 is enough. But yeah, a 14 is enough. So yeah, spider, finger spider, immune to Imp Spit too. So the spider only takes that four points of damage. That's Dave's turn, but he poofs out of sight again after, after his little woohoo kind of echoes away. Poof. Orb still Orbin, and we're back to Chimere at the top of the fighting order. Okay, um, I will stick with our nifty little um, hands of fate then. Boom. You attack. Okay, so you do six damage. I will do a deck save with a Phoenix Spider. And we can set that up on your sheet. The um the effect roll saves on things uh before yeah. the next session. Uh the spider saves again because he's very fast. Okay, I'll do my second attempt. Oh, well, and, you know. Yeah, you're still you're still getting hang of the hands <laughs> of fate. Yep. And the offhand's not feeling super fatey right now. So yep. you miss with the um with the follow up scythe and that is your turn unless you would like to move no, without I'm disengaging. Okay, no. Okay. Shafira. Okay. I'm gonna start in there. Stab him with my dagger. Dirty 20 hits. Stabity stab stab. And you've stabbed that spider to death. Flips up. Legs in the air. Ah Nicely done. Dave reappears. He's like, woohoo! You guys are professionals. Oh, uh, yeah. I am so lucky to be humanized by people who know what they're doing. And that don't want to kill me. Yay! 
So the feeder spiders are dead. Let me go to the end of this round and apply the damage of this, of this battle that has gone on. I almost slipped into Arnold voice there. <laughs> Another death cry. Another death cry. In the echoes of, of your spider dying, you hear many more things uh, suffering their, uh, their final breath. And we are out of combat. Uh, the orb is still womp womping with its power to your uh, southwest. Okay, um, do you want to heal up any before we go have a look at that orb or? Best do. Somehow I did not manage to take any damage, so. Have you got any left? Yes, tasty bacon. What do we do with that? Just roll a, a d4. I think it's a d4 plus one healing for each piece of tasty bacon you consume. Hmm. Oh, shit. I just clicked on it. I didn't mean to actually. <laughs> I didn't realize it would do the roll. It's on your sheet on the back. Yeah, on the actions page, it should be defined yeah. to roll. And to drag you to yourself. I think if you click it like you did Chimera, it doesn't automatically apply it. You have to drag it to yourself to automatically apply. Right. Numbers. Cool. Okay. So three points of, of bacony goodness. Filling Shafira's halfling tummy. <laughs> sparkles. <laughs> As she chews, you know, there's like a little glow. Ah, oh, bacon. Right. So do we reckon, um, well, we just hop over that bit to the west and, and go have a look at that orb. orb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. I am not going to punch it though. So you, you gingerly climb down and climb up, avoiding the acid. You get to this purple orb. And as you look at it, it seems to be much like the fire one, except for the difference in the color. And where the fire orb that you've already destroyed was like a snow cone of flame uh, surrounding this metal metallic pedestal, this seems to be, rather than flames, sparks. So electric. Okay. And is it... So is it like a solid orb, or is it is it a just orb-shaped ball of sparks? An orb-shaped ball of sparks surrounding a metallic pedestal. It's almost so like the energy ball of sparks is, is like a shield around the metallic base that you basically have to pass through to damage the metallic base. Okay. Um... Yeah, so we need to try and get rid of the orb. So how would we get rid of electric? Just trying to work out if the fact that this quarter staff has electric damage means it's immune to electric damage. Would that make any difference though? I think, uh, well, you can do an arcana check, both of you. Okay. That would be the sensible thing to do. Not with that roll, though. I have to change something really fast because apparently I don't remember what I, how I built this dungeon. Or actually, I'm going to change my mind entirely. You think it sparks, but Shafira is examining this orb, and she's like, oh, that's not sparks. I mean, we see this kind of like womp womp, like this vibration kind of thing. 
But I think that spark was just off of your scythe, Chimere. Okay. And this is actually like a vibration of, of some kind of sound. The power of sound instead. It's thunder, not lightning, that it's guarding this, this pedestal. And Shafir also remembers that when you were beating down the fire orb, that that orb was immune to fire. Okay. So this is thunder. Oh, I could see if my firebolt does all to it. Well, I was thinking we could just look at it silently and see if that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, give that a try. I will back up. If, if move yourself back, I don't want you getting hurt, mate. Uh oh. No. Well, you just miss with the fire orb. Uh, yeah. Shafira shoots wide. Keep keep rolling, because that's a cantrip. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, Shafira, roll roll one more time. All right, hey. third time's the charm. You're just when Shafira's like, okay, I'm gonna give it one more go. And if it doesn't hit this time, I'm going to just, like, screw firebolts. It's, they're stupid. But no, mm -hmm. the third time it hits, and it sizzles through the, the shield of sound, and hits, uh, hits the orb. But roll a damage. You see it landed, and you see your firebolt actually did damage to this. There's, like, a little hole temporarily. In, in the shield of sound but then after a few seconds you see it kind of you know, seals up again and there's still like that kind of barrier of sound but you definitely think you damaged this uh, this purple orb hmm all right shall I have a crack at it with my sunbolt you hit it with your sunbolt But you see, like, it doesn't seem to actually do any damage to it. Okay. But while, so it, it... while it passed through the sonic barrier, uh, it kind of seemed to fizzle out uh, against the, the strength of the metal. Right. And then Shafir remembers something else. She remembered that there seemed to be some kind of damage resistance on that fire orb. That you, that you didn't have to just hit it. You had to hit it with sufficient force. For yeah. your blow to actually have an effect. You get a little message in your head, uh, Shafira. And it's Steve. Hi. How's it going? Oh. How, how's it going, guys? Uh, well, it's, trouble is we haven't had to lie about anything, so it's not going very well. Oh, that's too bad. Carathlana keeps punching me. She doesn't realize I'm awake yet, you know, so I only have a few seconds. Uh, she's doing a good job, you know, even though I want to go through the portal with a glass of ice water. Uh, she's keeping me from doing it. Yeah. That's good. Mm, you think, you think you need any of her help? Uh, yeah. Because, <laughs> like... Well, when Cause like uh, she could you know, totally stop punching me, I'm sure, and go help you guys. I'll I'll suggest it, you know. Maybe I'll have time to suggest that before she punches me again. As long as you don't go anywhere. Uh, well, I don't know if I can promise that. Mm. If if she punches him out again, and gives him a good hard whack, <laughs> it should keep him out. Long enough for her to come and help us. So you hear this little cry. You hear this like Steve cries like, "Oh, oh no! Hey, t just take off your ring!" And then he goes silent again. <laughs> Planner could. Didn't she get the other one? The last one. I don't know. Um, I mean, do I could a, run back for her. Do um, do another set of Arcana checks. Shafira, 
thinking about stuff, uh, remembers that, oh yeah, that, that crown of ocean events, it had, it had some powers, but in most of the powers had to do with thunder and lightning. Mm. Right. It had a bunch of spells. Maybe it had, there's something helpful about that crown. Mm. Yeah. All right. Shall I run back for her? Yeah. All right. I'm going to, oh, can we send Dave back for her? Oh, but we yeah. need someone to sit on Steve, don't we? Hey, I'm Dave. I can be sit places. Can you? <laughs> I'm humanized. I run errands. Dave, can you do us a favor and ask Carolina to come over? But get her to tie Steve up really well before she does, just sure in case thing. he wakes up again. I can sit on Steve. Please do. Oh, boy. So Dave disappears and he, he flies. He flies off. And after several minutes, uh, Kareth Lana kind of appears. Uh, she's, she's, still, she's still across the kind of climby chasm. And she calls out, you know, I, don't know, I don't know if we can leave uh, Steve for long with the inf. Seems like a lot of responsibility. I know. But he says you need help. Yes. We were wondering if your crown could do anything with this, because it seems to be something to do with thunder. Oh, uh, what can it do? <laughs> I had to remind myself what it can actually do that was helpful in this, and I know there was something. So, so uh, Carathlon is thinking about her crown. Thinking, 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 thinking. Oh, my crown, it can do this warding wind thing that causes silence or, it's, or it, you know, overpowers the noise. So it could probably uh, nullify this shield. Yeah. It could do that. Give it a try. Maybe then you could, I don't know, push it into the acid pool. Mm, yeah. All right. Um, yes. Do we like, set up Predator? Yeah. Do we can we tell if the pedestal is like just sat there or is it affixed to the ground or it's heavy? Right. You'd think it would probably take both of you to push it anywhere. Okay. I get down this So Kareth Lana, she she climbs over and it takes takes some more time. She you see her kind of concentrate, and the stone on her crown of ocean bits begins to glow blue, and this wind whirls up, surrounding her. She gets as close as she can to the orb uh, without actually touching it, and you see the wind begin to merge with the sonic barrier surrounding this column, and they begin to blend and kind of absorb and the wind takes over. So there's, there is this like harsh gust of wind and you can't, if you're, if you're within its effect, you can't really talk to each other, but you can now kind of step within its range uh, without feeling any damage from the shielding that was protecting the orb. Kamiya gestures madly at Shafira and starts pushing it on the pedestal. And let me double check how long it lasts. Okay, you've got 10 minutes. Oh, push. Good. <laughs> okay, whichever one of you has the higher strength, uh, because you're working together, roll with um, advantage. Strength. So is mine. Shit. Go on, you've been rolling bad. Carathlon has bigger, more strength than you guys, but she's concentrating, so. Yeah. Mm. Um, so what, do we, we just roll a strength? Like an athletics check would be fine. You said with advantage, yeah? Yeah. Just, just do another roll and we'll the highest of the two. So that's enough. Yeah, an 18 is totally enough. Uh, it takes some grunting 
you know, putting all of your energy in it, you feel like you're going to need some toast after this is done to kind of recharge your batteries. <laughs> but you manage to heave the orb base, the metal base, into a pool of acid. And it sinks in. And you see, now that it's out of the cloud of wind, uh, the acid just seems to sort of be eating through uh, the, sonics, the sonic power surrounding it. And it's slowly decaying the metal. And every few seconds, you see this kind of burst of sonic power kind of pop off of this metallic base as the acid slowly corrodes it away. But after the 10 minutes, by the time um, Carathlana's warding wind dissipates, the lump of metal melts and subsides below the acid pool and becomes silent. And Carolyn was like, well, well, that's me then. Back, back to guard duty. Hi. I'm sure Cindy needs some punching by now. Yes, I'm sure he does. Enjoy. Should I send Dave back? Please. Just in case. And you hear Steve's voice in your head. You know, Carol thought it really doesn't have to punch me so much. She could just, I don't know, tie me up. <laughs> um and uh dave after a few minutes dave shows up again because he flew the long ways because nobody said his name three times yeah of course okay so uh oh yeah i need to get rid of that um was here and now it's gone fantastic two orbs down one to go? One to go. Okay. Yeah, there was um, a red, a blue, and a purple crystal by Piers, okay. the uh, elemental at the entrance. Is there anything to the south of us, or is that a dead end? To the south of you, there is a dead end. I'm so bad at revealing map things. No. Every time I go to the map, I've like deactivated the unmasking mode, so I start wiggling the whole map around instead of instead of unmasking. But yeah, you okay. see the cave to the south kind of dries away into like a little, you know, uh, it's a dry tri tributary of the acid pool. Okay, so it's not that way. And while it's carved out a skinny cave, you don't see anything of further interest to the south. Um, roll perception checks. You don't see anything of interest in that little... <laughs> so, well, you know, we've been hearing, like, um, death cries and whatnot coming from where we left all them mm -hmm. other fighting. Well, we could go back and see if there's less less of them. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, this is obviously just based on the map, but I'm guessing well, there's was... nothing to the north of us. Another way. There were... Was there another way to go from them? The only way that you saw, you know that there was, there seemed to be a path that was unexplored to the southeast. Yeah. Um, but you might have to get a little bit close to that, that battle you snuck away from. Uh, and you, you'll have to check out how things are there to see if you have a chance of, it, it will take a lot of stealth the way you, you left things to get past all of the combatants. Okay. Yeah. I think we need to have a look. Okay, so should we make his way back over to where Kerry Flanner and Steve are, and then yeah. take it from there? Yep. Yes. All right. I think this would be a good time for us to take a little break for any cigarettes or yes. um, bathrooms, etc. Okay. In a minute. All right. Two, two minutes, 20 seconds. <laughs> Make sure you have time to wash your hands. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. All right.